Hey, it's Tommy Hodgins. Today I'm going to show you some of my CSS pre-processing experiments that I've been working on lately. The first essential thing that I needed before I could pre-process CSS was a proper way to parse CSS. So I found Tab Atkins Parse CSS, which is the only package I've ever seen that was able to actually parse CSS correctly, and I modernized it. I brought it up to ES6, the newest version of JavaScript, and I also expanded it so that it could not only just parse CSS, but also stringify everything that it found back into a string so it can parse it and put it back together again. Now that I had the ability to correctly parse CSS, the next thing that I built was process CSS, which is just a very simple pattern for how you can take a string and process it with a series of plugins, functions acting as plugins, and return a usable result in kind of like a way that is nice to work with. So with process CSS and parse CSS together, it's very easy to implement your own custom CSS preprocessor. So I've done this for work. I've built our own preprocessor in our bundler, but as a demo, something that I can share with everybody, I've also built process CSS demo, which is a way that you can use process CSS and parse CSS together to support custom at rules, custom selectors, custom properties in an interesting way custom functions and custom units in CSS. So this is really taking CSS to the next level in terms of preprocessing. But one thing that you might have guessed here is that traditionally CSS preprocessing is taking CSS, reading it, and transforming it into other CSS. And what we're doing here, we can do that, and some of these transformations do, but what we're doing is we're taking CSS, reading it, and outputting the JavaScript we need to support those features. So well, there are CSS features that you want, but sometimes you have to use a JavaScript plugin. This completely abstracts that away. So you're just writing CSS and ending up with only what you need. So let's have a peek at it. So here are all of the transformations that are in process CSS demo right now. Uh, a good example of a CSS to CSS transformation is this base64 encode function. So if anywhere in code, I've used base64 dash encode with the path to an image file, or path to any file really, it will be swapped out with URL function and the base64 contents of that file. So in my style sheet, I don't have to be working around or dealing with the base64 content in line. I can just deal with the um, file path and be working at a much higher level, but in my end style sheet, I can have the full output thing. So if you think about this code, I'm sure it doesn't look the nicest, but it's less than 50 lines. So if you think that one day I had an idea for a custom base64 encode function, and less than 50 lines of code later, I've got something usable that I am using in my CSS style sheets, all of a sudden this doesn't look so bad. So as a CSS to CSS transformation, that's pretty simple. An example of a JavaScript supported one would be something like um, the parent selector. So here I'm pulling in a parent selector plugin, and that's something that you could already run in JavaScript. And what we're going to do is we're going to parse the information out, and then we output the plugin because we need that to run what we find, and we output the JavaScript call to the plugin, and we also output uh, any CSS that needs to be output. So I'm gonna give this a spin, show you what it looks like, and show you how to work with it, and hopefully we can have some fun. So I've got it here linked as pre-process, and if we type it with no arguments, we see this wonderful help text. So it tells us that there are a few options like outputting CSS, minify, beautify, uh, we can supply our own data in a JSON string, and we can display this text. So let's give it a spin. If I say preprocess uh, a selector A in a rule, the first thing that we notice is that we got JavaScript back. So if we want CSS, we have to specify CSS to get that. The reason for this is that for most of these transformations, they're going to be transforming and including JavaScript. So the default here is that you could just include this on your page and it does include any vanilla normal JavaScript that you used, but it also will include all of the JavaScript supported styles. 
if you're using a CSS to CSS transformation only, then you can output the CSS. So here's an example of a CSS to CSS transformation. Uh, I've got a custom at rule at dash dash reset. And yeah, let's beautify that. So that gets transformed into this rule here. It's, it's written for the wildcard, so it applies to every element and it applies those properties. And another thing that I've added to my custom at reset at rule here is if I give it a selector, it will scope the reset to that selector and its children. So this is something that I've been using in a lot of my stuff. Instead of copying and pasting this reset from another file, now I just type you know, at dash dash reset and it's good to go. So for an example of a JavaScript supported style, let's do uh, element units. So here, let's say we have an iframe and we know that we want the width to be 100%, but we want the height to be uh, you know, an aspect ratio of 16 by nine, let's say. Um, if we were to do something like calc 100% divided by 16 divided by nine, this 100% is not going to refer to the width. It's going to refer to height. This just isn't gonna do what we need. So instead, if we do 100 dash dash EW, that now becomes uh, 100 element width units. So that is equal to the width and this will work. So I'm gonna output this as CSS and we'll see what happens. We got the iframe and the untouched, the regular property that does not need JavaScript to support it, but missing is the property that does need JavaScript at runtime uh, to run a plugin to support that. So I'm gonna take the CSS off this and we'll see the full output, including the JavaScript. So here at the bottom, we have the element percentage unit plugin. And then above that, we have a copy of JS and CSS, which is our virtual event-driven style sheet manager. And then inside our code, we have the regular untouched CSS, and we have a call written to JS and CSS, a function that calls this element percentage unit plugin with the selector that it found for the JS supported rule and the property that contains the custom unit to be swapped out. So if we were to copy and paste this whole thing onto the page where we want this style to apply, it is going to be that running on the page. So I'll give another example of this, um, an interactive one. So another thing that we have here, a JS supported thing is element queries. So if I do dash dash element and we target the P tag and a breakpoint like min width, um, 600 and it's going to be in pixels because that's all that JavaScript measures. And then we have a custom selector uh, style sheet inside with the custom selector self to target only those P tags that match the breakpoint. And we say the background should be lime. This is something that I wish we had in CSS. It's valid CSS syntax, but it's not supported in any browser and we can't even support it as is client side in the browser, but we can take it we can parse it into something, we can supply everything that we need for runtime. So I'm gonna copy this into the browser, into a loaded page, and you'll see it running. So here we have a test page. There's definitely some P tags on here. So if I paste this in, we see that automatically any P tag that is at least 600 pixels wide gains that um, rule, the background line. And you can see that when it's less, it goes away. So that is how you can write CSS style sheets, you can create custom app rules, you can automatically support these things, and you don't even have to worry about it. I'm gonna keep expanding the different transformations that Process CSS Demo has, um, so I can keep sharing some of these techniques and ideas. We've got all kinds of stuff. There's scroll percentage units, so based on how much you've scrolled um, in width or in height, or a parent selector, or um, other things like supporting things that are coming to CSS, like the document at rule, but we can support our own custom one. Um, 
and then other ideas like custom properties. And you can support these in the browser, but by supporting it this way, we can also support it in browsers that don't even support custom properties. So this is a way that we can bring these features to older browsers. We're not relying on new browser features. We're actually, um, if you wanted to polyfill CSS, this is a good approach to do that. So it's kind of the opposite of um, using cutting edge tech. It's using existing tech to bring cutting edge ideas to current tech. So I'm gonna continue expanding this and I'm sure I'll be making more videos, but I just wanted to give you a heads up so you'd know what I'm up to and how you can check it out and how you can play around with it. Um, a lot of these transformations were written in about 30 minutes. So if you have an idea for a custom at rule or a custom selector or something like that, you know, you could just be 30 minutes away from playing around with it or using it. So if you think of anything cool, uh, feel free to let me know. I would love to hear about it. Hope you have a great day.